Last summer was devastating for many reasons. Um, yes, a number of people in this building knew George Floyd. Um, but it was devastating because we as a community, and by community I mean, I'm, I'm going to go nationwide with the viewership. We as a community shared a unique moment. And that unique moment was we watched someone plead for air. We watched someone beg for mercy. And we watched someone take their last breath. We still deal with the remnants of that day. I was incarcerated for two years. They told me a lot of good things about the program, so I felt like it would be the best situation for me getting out of jail. I didn't really want to go anywhere else. And the stuff that they provide here for me was what I really needed. It's been great. Actually, it, it's everything that I wanted it to be. There was goals that I had before that it was kind of hard for me to get to. But now that I've came here to this building, like living situation, financial situations, jobs, spending time with the kids and everything, everything, it kind of happens like right here. given the fact that the staff that work here are, they're helpful and they actually care. You know what I mean? Like, and it's genuine. And I, I, that's, those are the type of things that people need. Those are the type of things that I need. Our core constituents are formerly incarcerated men. The oldest is, I wanna say 63, and the youngest is 21. Um, so it's a wide age range. It's not happenstance that organizationally, uh, the bulk of the men that we serve are black men. For as liberal a city, and a community, as the Twin Cities are, there's still issues of racism, and there's still issues of equity. And if you look a little closer in those issues of equity, you find black and brown people. Better Futures is an organization that has been around since 2007, and really is one of its kind in Minnesota, and I would even go to say amongst one of its kind across the nation. partner with them by providing them um, things that anybody would need um, upon returning to community after incarceration. So we provide them housing, uh, we provide them employment, we provide them um, uh, social support. We call that a high-touch high coaching model. All the lessons and skills that we try to instill in our men are rooted and grounded in them knowing that they're equal to anyone in society. And just like anyone is forgiven, they deserve to be forgiven too.
And so historically, we have always kind of looked at the deep end. We're always on the treatment end. Um, but the best intervention is prevention. Again, one of the first things we do when a man comes to us is we get him signed up for health insurance. And we get that man into a doctor. We get a mental health assessment because we want that man to know all there is to know about his health. Then we put them through job training and that's classroom training and then on the job training where they provide services to the community. We have multiple business lines. We have a deconstruction business. We have a property maintenance business. We do appliance recycling and we have a reuse warehouse. Extremely excited that the American Heart Association was willing to fund, uh, in part, our 2Gen program. My daughter is my life. Being here in this program has given me the chance to reconnect with my daughter on levels that I thought I wouldn't be able to, given that, that little distance, that little gap of time that we have from each other. Um, the staff here, everyone here, the men, everybody, it's just an all well, comfortable place to be. And when my daughter comes in here, like, I don't know, I feel like she takes on, like, it's almost like she takes on a whole different, like, personality because to me, her happiness is here. Her happiness is with me, her happiness is with the family. Um, me becoming a part of the 2Gen thing, that's what I needed the most because that's all I ever wanted was to have my daughter back and to reestablish that connection that we lost. Um, and that's not only working with the individual man coming out of incarceration, but with his entire family and family re reunification, um, which, is, which is huge because we know that the biggest motivator for men is reuniting with their children, being there for them, their children, being a father. You know, a, a man who successfully completes our program, he's done the work, he's invested the time and the energy and the funds into their success. And we are assisting and ushering them out to a bright new future against the odds. Most of the men that come to us are a traditional American statistic. We work with them in partnership to create the future that they want for themselves. They all want the same thing for me. My mom, my dad, everybody, every day, call me every day. I'm so proud of you. I have a bad history of falling off. I'm so proud of you that you've still been doing good. I'm so proud of you. Staff here, I'm so proud of you. I can't believe you're upholding, like you're actually upholding everything, you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah, and it makes me proud of myself, you know what I mean? And that just motivates me to let me know like, okay, I can get myself where I want to go. It's just a matter of applying myself the way that I need to. So with that being said, I'm going to continue to apply myself the way that I need to, to not make only myself happy, but everyone else around me happy too.